Hey guys, I'm back again. Uh, it's time for my 16,000 kilometer servicing on my 2018 Triumph Tiger 1200 uh, or 10,000 miles. Um, and uh, I just gonna uh, do this and walk you through the uh, process. Uh, before we get started, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Like this video and subscribe to my channel. I, I don't post too much, but I, I whenever I do any servicing on my bikes, I'll post some videos. So if you uh, if you want to uh, you know look out for future videos, just hit like and subscribe. Um, the sixteen thousand kilometer servicing involves three main things: an oil change, an air filter change, and uh, uh, throttle body uh, balancing. Uh, I, I've already done created a video on um, oil change for my braking servicing. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check that out. So I'm not going to show an oil change in this video, but I am going to show an air filter change uh, as well as throttle body balancing. Um, to be honest, this is my first time doing a throttle body balancing. I actually never heard of it before because my other bikes only have one throttle body, but this has three th throttle bodies, so I uh, just need to balance them out. Um, so let's get started. Um, first things first, place your bike on a, on the center stand and, uh, to get to the air filter, uh, we're going to have to remove the tank, the fuel tank. Um, and in order to remove the fuel tank, you're going to have to remove all these side panels, uh, and then remove the fuel tank. So. I have these upper crash bars on. Hopefully I do not need to remove these crash bars in order to remove these side panels and the fuel tank. Uh, I'm gonna try, hopefully I don't have to. Um, but if not, then I guess I'll have to remove the crash bars. So let's get started. First things first, um, what you're gonna need to remove the side panels, I'll just walk you through the side panels. You're gonna need a, um, five millimeter uh, hex um, or allen key you're gonna also need a, a three millimeter hex right uh, the three millimeters for these two tiny screws for the badge uh, and then the rest of the bolts are five five millimeter you're also gonna need a five mil five millimeter uh, allen key uh, you can't use your regular bolt because or your screwdriver because there are three bolts. Let me turn the handlebar this way. There are three bolts on the inside. One, uh, two, and then there's one more in the front. You cannot, the screwdriver won't fit here. So you're gonna need to have an angle uh, with which only an Allen key will provide you. So this is also five millimeter. So just three things. And um, let's get started. So. I'm not gonna film, I'm, I'm just gonna show you one side first. Actually, I'm just gonna show you one side and it's the exact same on the other side. So I'll, I'll film from the right hand side. So first things first is, um, there are two five millimeter screws here. Uh, this will remove this little front panel, this tank panel. And so let's get that out. Um, Okay, so I've removed these and this panel comes off loose. There is a um, uh, cigarette lighter port where you can charge accessories that's connected. I don't think you need to disconnect that, so I'm just going to leave it here for now. Uh, next, we're going to remove this, uh, this plastic panel. For that, you need to take out your seat. So take out your seat and that will expose uh, these two five millimeter bolts as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm only going to show you the right hand side. The left hand side is exactly the same. So let's remove that and let's remove this bolt. Uh, okay, so I've removed that bolt uh, from here. There is um, there is some kind of a washer. So make sure you don't uh, lose that. Remove that as well. Next, uh, there is another five millimeter bolt here. Uh, let's remove that. Okay, now let's try to remove these. I'm gonna move the camera here. Let's try to remove the tank bed. So these, there are two bolts here. They're three mm. So I'm gonna change the three mm. And let's get this out. Okay. 
Okay, so the badge comes out. Let me put this away. Okay, there is another, underneath the badge, there is another 5mm bolt that's holding the side panels to the, the, the tank. So let's remove that. Switch again to my 5mm bolt. Get this out. Okay. Now, uh, it's still not loose. So, now let me turn the handlebar here. On the inside, there are three uh, 5mm screws, one on the top and two at the bottom. Let me see if I can find it from the, from the bottom, but it might be hard to see. Let me see if I can point it out to you guys. So there's one here behind the fog light where my finger is, and there's another one here. Uh, and these can only be reached with an Allen key. So let me remove these three bolts and that should, that should, uh, uh, the, the, the side panel should get detached from the tank. I believe there's another screw inside here, but um, let me let me let me remove the three screws first. So I'm gonna stop the video because it's gonna be hard to film. Okay, so I've removed those three screws with an Allen key on the inside, and that should let you take out this panel. Just pull it out, and that sits on the inside of the tank, so you can just pull that out. So let me place this the side now that'll expose let me zoom out a little so you have some context that'll expose another five millimeter screw with this little bracket kind of thing that's holding the the side panel uh, to the tank so I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna remove this bracket as well just one five mm bolt so I can't I'll just stop the pause the video again Okay, so I removed that that uh, screw that's holding the bracket from right here. And this bracket is actually, you know, uh, what this is for, it, it holds that, you know, that, that the plastic panel on the inside with the three screws so that I removed the Allen key. That's what holds that panel to the outer panel. So removing this, uh, now we should be able to detach uh, the side panel. So let me try that. Hopefully it works without having to take out the crash board. Yep, you just need to kind of pull it out. Okay, what I was afraid of. So the crash bars are getting in the way. Let me fiddle around a little bit more, see if I can wiggle the panels without taking out the crash bar. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to take out the crash bar. So give me a second. Okay, so I tried wiggling the wiggling the side panels you know out without taking on the crash bars i just couldn't do it the internet says it's possible but maybe with other brands of crash bars uh, these are the heed crash bars from poland i think i i, I, I couldn't do it uh, maybe there is a way but um, i don't want to scratch my panels so uh, Obviously, the last resort is to take take out the crash bars. I'm going to try something else, which might be easier. It looks like if I take out these wind deflectors and the beak, I should be able to pull these panels out from the top. And that taking out the beak and the wind deflectors might be easier than taking out the crash bars. So to take out the wind deflectors, I think I just need to remove this screw here, which is a 5mm, and one on the other side as well. And there are, I believe... Let me show you from the bottom of the beak. There are four uh, eight mm uh, bolts, which I think I just I just need a eight mm uh, eight mm socket. So the four of them, one, two, uh, four, four of them. So take them out. I have fog lights as well, so the fog light bracket is attached to one of these and one there. So just be careful. And I think the beak should. This beak should, I should be able to pull it out. So let me try that.
Okay, I'm in a 8mm socket. Okay, so I managed to get the beak out. That is the, the beak out. That is quite uh, easy. Uh, there are four washers, so just make sure not to lose them. Um, one thing before, uh, after unscrewing the bolts, there is a um, right here. There is a air temperature sensor uh, that. Uh, that you need to unplug before you can take the beak out, but that's pretty easy. Uh, once you unplug that, the beak will fall out. Okay, so the beak's out. Now for the moment of truth, let's see if I can lift the panels out uh, from the top. Alright! That was a success. Awesome. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And then we should be ready to take out the tank. Ooh, one more thing to do. Once you take out the side panels, it's just this one black, black uh, panel. Uh, this is easy. Just, I think, you've already removed the bolts. You just need to really just, just pull it back and out. And then the same thing on the other side. Okay, so to remove the fuel tank, you're gonna have to drain the fuel out. Um, so best thing to do is actually not have too much fuel in the tank to begin this process, but uh, unfortunately I made a mistake. I have about a half tank left, so there's a lot of fuel to drain. So, you know, you're supposed to use a proper uh, fuel container. I'm just using a bucket because it's a lot of fuel, about 10 liters or so, I think. Um, and, uh, a nice clean funnel and to drain the fuel you go there's a fuel drain hose here take it out from the retaining clip okay and then use a plier there's a retaining clip here sorry there's a metal clip uh, squeeze it and pull it out just like that so it's not it's not at the edge and now, time to remove this. So keep a funnel. Okay, so once the fuel is completely drained, place the fuel, drain fuel in a nice safe location away from uh, dirt and also uh, fire and then put the put the plug back in now it's time to remove these uh, fixings that hold the tank to the frame so there's one on this side and one on that side that's six millimeters so go ahead and uh, remove that <laughs> So we should be able to raise the tank up. We need some wooden blocks to hold it in place. Get this out of the way. Okay, with the tank raised, the couple of breather hoses we need to disconnect. There's one on this side, and then there's one on the other side. The rubber hoses are different sizes, so you won't get them mixed up when putting them back together. So let's disconnect these two, this rubber hose on this side, the breather hose, and then there's another breather hose on the other side, okay? So let me get that done. Okay, next, let's, uh, let's disconnect the two electrical connectors. <coughs> I think one is for the fuel pump and the other is for the fuel level. So let's disconnect those, and uh, then we should be able to raise the tank up some more. So let me get that done. Okay, coming back to the left of the bike, I've disconnected the electrical, two electrical connectors. Uh, there's one, now time to disconnect the fuel rail. Um, 
raise the and that sh once we disconnect this is right here with the held with the with a clamp uh, so you use a plier again just like you did with the the fuel hose uh, and remove that and then disconnect or pull out this rubber fuel rail there should be no fuel but uh, just keep a rag place a rag here and then um, I remove it there should be no fuel okay so I have removed uh, the fuel rail from here with the clamp you can see I pulled it down and I've removed it there's ve very like a couple of drops of fuel so not much now it's time to remove the let me go to the other side of the bike it's time to remove the fuel connector where it is there there it is okay this I hear it's quite tricky um, so the way to do that is first unlock it so push this uh, sorry shaky push this little red thing all the way to the back pull it out okay and then we're gonna have to squeeze both ends this side and the top end and then and then pull it out so I hear it's tricky let's try it okay so I removed the fuel connector again there's very little fuel a couple of drops so place a rag uh, it helps if you <laughs> if you have skinny fingers so you got to squeeze let me get from this angle basically to get it out from from this where is it from this white thing you need to first pull this thing all the way out and then you just squeeze the top and the bottom and then pull it out so it helps if you have skinny fingers uh, and then apply a lot of force okay just a couple of more steps to remove the fuel tank so while I'm on the right side of the bike let me just show you in the front of the fuel tank right there's the bike in front of the fuel tank there's another fuel rail here same thing like we did on the other side it's held with the clamp remove the clamp take out the fuel rail uh, use a plier to remove the clamp take out the fuel rail there's an exact same thing on the left side of the bike do the same thing uh, on the left side there should be no fuel again but maybe a couple of drops so just keep a rag handy all right let me get both the left and the right side done oh boy removing those fuel rails from the left and the right of the bike was quite the challenge removing the clamps was easy but removing the pulling out the rubber hose from the tank was difficult but just keep at it and pull it don't damage the thing now the tank should be able to just slide out lift up and slide out so let me get this out from here and slide out oh fuck all right, I forgot something, guys. Uh, as you notice, I fucked up. Uh, the little bit of fuel was dropping when I removed the, was spilling out when I removed the fuel tank. So I forgot to do something. Um, you know, we disconnected three uh, fuel rails, right? One from the back and one from the left front and one from the right front. Once you disconnect those, before you remove the tank from the bike, make sure you plug those, plug those three uh, holes and uh triumph sells a uh blanking cap it comes in a set of four if you want to know the part number it's this t3880632 it's basically a rubber plug uh and you can before you take out the tank make sure you plug plug those so as you notice here one there's another one on the other side and then there's one here in the back so plug them before taking out the tank, so that will prevent the fuel from spilling out. Okay, I didn't do that, I forgot, sorry, my bad, plug him. But anyway, there was about a little fuel that f spilled out, I'm gonna clean that up. Okay, time to remove the air box, that should be easy. Unplug the air temperature sensor from the top of the air box. Okay, and then there are 10 screws on the perimeter they are T20 Torx. So T20 Torx bit, uh, remove all 10 of them. So I'm just gonna do that and uh, 
I'll get I'll continue the video after that okay so the, the top part of the air box has been removed that's what it looks like the old air filter you can see how dirty it is so time for it to change this if you were not doing throttle body balancing this is where you got to stop you can just pull out this air filter put a new air filter in uh, I'm gonna continue on with the throttle body balancing so I need to remove the the air box completely the bottom part to access the the throttle bodies underneath so let me just figure out how to do that and I'll get back okay so let's start by removing the manifold absolute pressure sensor the map sensor so here it was connect there was a connector here the the back left of the air box so squeeze and remove that that's the connector this is the map sensor so we're going to remove this uh, to remove the sensor from the air box we're going to remove the screw which is a t20 torx again so remove that and then there's a hose at the bottom so remove that rubber hose and then we should be able to just remove out the sensor after removing the sensor i'm going to plug it back into the connector okay so let me get that done okay so i've removed the map sensor from the air box and i've connected it back to the connector here's the hose that go that's connected to the map sensor which i removed as well next it's time to remove the secondary air injection control valve connector which is i already done it which is right here the the back right of the air box so that was plugged in here i disconnected it uh we gotta disconnect two more hoses one is a breather hose right here again use a plier to squeeze this and pull the hose out and there's another one at the bottom here again there's there's some clamps holding it together just below the secondary air injection control valve again use pliers to squeeze the clamp and pull the hose out so let me try that i'm hoping it's not too difficult okay so that was relatively easy actually you don't need pliers you can just use your fingers to kind of squeeze the clamps it's the, it's, these clamps are not so difficult so I have one breather hose here and another one here now again at the rear of the rear box the air box sorry there's two fixings two screws eight millimeter sockets so um you probably need a, a short socket with an angle ratchet and remove those two fixings and then we should be able to just lift up the air box uh, uh, this is uh, you got to lift it up and pull rearwards pull backwards so this will come through this bracket also on the left hand side this is the intake duct it's a piece of rubber which is what connects to this piece right here uh, you just gotta it's malle it's bend it and kind of push it through the frame um, and then you can pull the air box rearward so let me try that Okay, let's try this. And there you go. It's the entire air box is out. All right, guys. Um, throttle body balancing. So, actually, I did it, um, but I, I kind of had to do it in Hardy, so I didn't film it. But I'll just, you know, it's quite easy to do. I'll I'll put links in the description to the extra tools and the software that you need. But what you need to do is you need to run the engine and adjust the adjuster screws to uh, balance the throttle bodies 
obviously you can't fit the tank on on the bike because it'll block the tall body so place the tank nearby slightly you know don't place it too low um, you know don't let gravity work against you um, and in order to connect the fuel from the tank uh, to the bike you can buy this Uh, you can buy this extension fuel hose uh, with the you know the connectors from Triumph. I'll put the part number uh, in the description, or you could do you could just buy it off uh, Amazon or um, uh, AliExpress. Just the rubber hose and, and these connectors. Uh, I believe they are called uh, fuel line couplers, and the size is 7.89 millimeters. You can buy them. I'll, I'll put links in the description as well. So you need a fuel hose extension to connect the fuel to the bike. Also, you need to power up the fuel pump, which is in the tank. So you can buy this extension. I bought, again, there's a Triumph part number. It just connects to the fuel pump connector to the bike and to the fuel pump in the tank. So the fuel pump uh, will have power and then you've got the fuel coming from the tank uh, to the bike. Start the bike. Obviously, I put, I put some shop rags here to not let anything go in but when you're doing the throttle body balancing obviously take them out leave the throttle bodies exposed start the bike once the bike is running hook up the bikes um this thing here to your obg2 connector which i bought from um, amazon uh where is it uh, I'll put links in the description where you can buy that and that connects to your computer. I use this free software called Tiger Tool. You can also use Tune ECU. I'll put links in the description of where you can download them. Tiger Tool is free. Tune ECU, I think you got to pay for it. Um, and then uh, both will let you, you know, check your error codes on your bike, reset your error codes, uh, you know, reset your service. Um, uh, service lights uh, also do throttle balancing and stuff so you connect that to your computer connect this to your bike start your engine run it it'll show you the the pressures in the in all the three throttle bodies and if they're out of balance it'll say out of balance number two the number two throttle body is always constant what you're gonna have to do is between one and two there's this um, T30 Torx screw, take that out fully, and then that'll expose an ex uh, adjuster valve for throttle body one. For throttle body two, there's an adjuster valve between two and three, just below this hose right here. You can see this, uh, this uh, adjuster screw that has this yellow paint on it. Both these adjuster screws are T20 Torx. So just Use a T20 torch screwdriver to adjust it slightly until the reading on the Tiger Tool software or TUDC EC software shows all three throttle bodies have the same uh, pressure, right? All balanced. Once that's done, you're done. Put back the T30 Torx screw, tighten it to five Newton meters, okay? And then that's it. Turn off your bike and your throttle bodies are balanced. And now you can uh, start putting everything back together. So first things first, disconnect your uh, fuel pump electric connector and uh, disconnect your fuel hose. Just keep some shop rags handy because some fuel might spill out. Oh, obviously to run the bike, you need uh, you need to put some fuel in the, in the tank. So I did put about two liters of fuel in the tank because remember we drained the fuel earlier so I put about two liters in the, in the tank and uh, to do the throttle body balancing. So uh, when you remove the fuel hose, just keep uh, um, drain the fuel out into your container again, whatever is left. Plug the hole again using those uh, rubber blanking caps which I you know um, uh, showed earlier. Again, everything will be in the description, all the part numbers and links. And empty out the tank again, plug it in. And now we can start putting the air box back and uh, changing the air filter and putting everything back. So 
let me you know do all that okay so to fit the the bottom of the air box you're gonna have to push this little uh, thing through this bracket here and also this air intake duct needs to go through the frame and come out from here so this you gotta bend it's rubber so you gotta bend and uh, pull it out from here push this through here and then push the air box forward and then down okay uh, this air temperature sensor make sure this will go at the top this air temperature sensor make sure it, uh, it's on top of the rear air box but this will connect to the the top of the air box okay so let me get that done okay so I managed to fit the bottom of the rear uh, bottom of the air box so you can see in the left this rubber thing is I pulled it through the frame right so it's uh, it's sitting nicely this goes through this bracket you have to then push it down so the, remember the rear of the air box there are these two 8 mm screws that we socket screws that we pulled out um, that hole f in the air box should fit nicely through the bracket so put those 8, 8 mm uh, hex screws back in tighten it using an 8 mm socket uh, to 5 newton meters which is about 44 and a bit inch pounds okay so now this is sitting nicely now to connect up the sensor, so let's connect up the manifold absolute pressure sensor, the MAP sensor, which is right here. Okay, and this this will attach right here with a with the T20 screw that uh, torque screw that we removed earlier. So that hooks up right here. Also, if you remember, there was a hose uh, right here which hooks up to the sensor. Right, that's that's what it's sensing the pressure, uh, absolute pressure. So this right here goes in, the hose connects to that, and then we fix, uh, fix it to the uh, air box using the T20 Torx. Okay, let me that, get that done. Okay, so I've hooked up the manifold absolute pressure sensor, the MAP sensor, torqued it to 1.5 newton meters, so it's not too much. Next, let's hook up the secondary air injection control valve sensor, which is right here. And that goes to the rear right of the uh, air box. That's the connector right there. Also remember there were two rubber hoses that we removed. Uh, one is, uh, let me get the angle right, sorry, right here. And uh, it, that, there's a, that goes, connects to the air box. And then there's one below the sensor, one below the sensor that's this, and that, that's the rubber hose that connects there. There's some clamps, you don't need pliers, actually it's quite easy. Uh, some metal clamps it's quite easy to just use your fingers to squeeze it put the rubber hose on on these two uh, to the air box and then put the clamps over it that that's the metal clamp it's quite easy okay let me get that done hook up the connector as well okay so the secondary air injection control valve sensor is hooked up I've hooked up the hoses as well put the metal clamps here and here okay all done and now, time to put a new air filter in. So I've got an aftermarket high flow air filter. And this, you can buy it off Amazon. It's for the Triumph Tiger 1200. You can see if it's compatible for your bike or not at, in Amazon. Okay, so let me open this up. Okay, so a nice clean air filter, new one. Put it in. Now we're gonna put the top of the air box and then the 10 uh, T20 Torx screws again. So I'm gonna uh, screw those in. And uh, let me do that and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I, I screwed out all the 10 T20 Torx screws. Uh, Torx spec is 1.5 Newton meters or 13 and a bit inch pounds, so very little. Um, Use a nice long uh, extension and a, a torque wrench to torque it. Uh, and also then connect up the air temperature sensor back. You can, there's a little, there's a little um, gap where you can route the wire through. Okay, so air filter change done, air box installed. Now we can put 
start putting the tank back together. All right. Okay, time to put the tank back on. I've drained the fuel from the tank. Um, you know, those blanking, rubber blanking caps I put on the, the front left, front right, and bottom left where we drained the fuel from. I had blanking caps on them, so I removed them, drained them into a container. I got a proper fuel container this time. I'll show that when I'm filling the tank back up again. But let's put the tank back on. Uh, so let's, let me do that. Here, so, so there are two grooves on the front of the tank. Make sure the, the tank sits on those grooves, on those rubber pegs. So that there's grooves on the tank, make sure the grooves fit into the rubber pegs. Okay, so you will know the tank is in the right position if these holes align with these holes when the tank is resting. I've obviously put a wooden block that made sure that these holes align when the tank is fully down. And that's how you know on both sides. So that's how you know it's aligned. Now, time to hook up all the electrical connectors, the hoses and everything. So let me start with the most difficult ones. On the right side of the tank, remember we disconnected the fuel rail. I still got my rubber blanking cap. So I'm gonna remove that. The drains, the fuel's already drained, so there should be no fuel, but just keep a rag handy. I'm gonna remove this. Okay, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put this back in. Use use a use a plier to get the metal clamps on top, um, so it's 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 so it's clamping the the metal properly. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the left hand side. So let me get that done. Okay, so I've connected the fuel rails in the left front and the right front of the bike. I'll just show you the left hand side. I've removed the rubber blanking cap. I put the hose and I use a plier to squeeze the metal clamp and clamp it uh, right here. So the same thing on the right hand side. Now, same thing. Now let's move to the rear of the tank. Again, on the left side. I've got it raised with a wooden block. But let me hook up the electrical connected connectors. There's two. The orange, the, this little brown one is the fuel pump connector. That goes to the connector n near that, um, on the right side. And then the other one is uh, the fuel level center connector, which this hooks up to this port on the left side of the tank. Okay, so I'm gonna hook that up. I'm also gonna hook up the, the fuel uh, the f uh, fuel hose connector uh, which is on the right side of the bike you can see I got a rubber blanking cap there so I'm gonna remove that as well and hook that up because all of these have little slack so I can I can I can do it with the tank raised up uh, let me see if I can also hook up the breather hoses oh yeah the breather hoses the two breather hoses uh, one on the left and you can't get them mixed up because they're different sizes so you can see there's a breather hose port here and then there's one on the right side as well so I'm gonna hook the breather hoses the electrical connectors and the fuel pump uh, sorry the, the fuel uh, 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 fuel hose okay okay so as you can notice I've hooked up the the breather hose right here on the right side of the of the tank I've hooked up the fuel connector uh, make sure this orange clip put once you once you hear the click Make sure you push this in so that you'll hear another click so that's locked in place. Uh, also, let me see if I can get it. You see the orange electrical connector, the fuel pump, I've hooked that up. Uh, let me move to the left side of the bike now. Ah, you can see I've hooked up the left side breather hose. Very easy to do, there are no metal clamps. And also the black, uh, the second electrical connector, the black color one, which is the fuel level sender. Okay, the only thing left to hook up now is this last fuel rail with a uh, the, with a metal clamp. I don't know if you can see it. I'll pull the metal clamp out later. And that, that connects to this 
uh, here uh, well, I'll remove the rubber blanking cap again and I'll hook that up. It's This doesn't stretch too much, so I'm gonna have to lower the tank and then hook it up and then use a plier again to clamp it up. So let me get that done. Oh, one more thing. Remember where we drained the fuel using this? Uh, there's some retaining clips, right? So just route it, route, the, route the, this hose through the retaining clip, make sure the clamp, the metal clamp here is tied as well, so it's holding it in place. Okay, let me lower the tank and hook up this last uh, fuel rail. Okay, so I lied. Uh, actually, uh, this fuel rail, you can actually pull up. It was just stuck. The clamps were stuck with some other hoses. You can pull it up so you don't need to drop the tank. You can actually uh, have easy access with it raised and then connect it. As you can see, I've also put the metal clamp back on using pliers. And I think we are ready to drop the tank and uh, fix these screws okay so screw these two screws in six uh, millimeter hex use a six millimeter hex bit and a torque wrench one on the right side and one on the left side uh, torque it to 12 newton meters or about a uh, hundred and six point something inch pounds um, and that's it and the fuel tank has been installed. Everything's connected. Well, before we put the panels back, let's actually fill, uh, fill the tank back up with fuel. So I got my proper fuel container this time. Let's fill it up. Okay, so I filled the tank up with enough fuel. Just don't be alarmed. There's a, on the right side of the bike at the bottom, near the, just behind the uh, brake pedal, there's a breather hose, a fuel tank breather hose. So that might leak some fuel. I was a little worried at first. I was like, what the hell? But then I realized if you open this fuel tank, there's a, there's a breather hole here and so if you if you fill it if you fill the tank up too fast or if you overfill the tank you'll get some fuel leakage from there so make sure to fill it slowly and uh, don't overfill the tank obviously okay before we start putting all the panels and everything back to get the bodywork back together let's actually just make sure the bike starts because I put in fuel right so yep the bike is working fine don't worry there's there was a check engine light that came on don't worry because uh when we we're doing the throttle body balancing we had to disconnect a lot of the sensors remember the air temperature sensor the manifold absolute pressure sensor the secondary air injection control valve sensor and so that was causing some error codes once i put everything back together i'll show you how to clear those error codes but the bike's working fine now time to put the bodywork back Okay, let's start putting the bodywork, the panels uh, back to the bike. I'm going to only show you the right side and it's exact same in the left side. So let's start with this little black plastic panel, which sits right here, right? There's a, there's a hole here that will align with this hole. And uh, there's, a, there's a hole here that will sit on, uh, on this right here so it'll sit something like this right so it looks something like this also to get it in you notice there's a little uh, protruding metal pin here that will go into this little thing so you got to put it in here and slide it forward and second there's a hole here with a rubber washer you got to push this little plastic pin into that right okay uh, let me do that Okay, next, let's get your uh, side fairing. I've got my right hand side one here. And we're gonna again push it from above because I got my crash bars. But if you don't have crash bars, it's easy. You just kind of put it in. I'm gonna push it from above. One thing to note is let me just show you the inside here. Right here, there's a little. S I don't know if you can see it. There's a little slit with a little rubber. Uh, I don't know what you call it, but a rubber piece with a slit that will fit into. Let me try to show it to you. 
that needs that slit needs to go through uh, this little metal uh, flat piece so that slit will go through here and then the side fairing will sit on this and then we can push the side fairing in a couple of screws which I'll show you after fitting it okay okay so I managed to wiggle the side fairing uh, from, from above uh, and I made sure that that, that that little slit at the bottom it's hard to see with the fairing on the little slit with the rubber fitting goes through that little metal uh, flat uh, part so it's sitting nicely now let's screw in some screws so you need three screws one of them has a little washer if you remember when we removed it that goes okay let me show you this little weird looking metal washer right here this one goes uh, uh, right here which attaches this little side panel to the bike another all of the same screws by the way uh, the other two don't have these metal washers so the other ones just look like a regular screw one goes uh, here which hooks up the side fairing to this uh, plastic panel and to the tank and a final one that goes underneath the, the Triumph uh, tank badge so right here all all are five millimeter screws and all of them uh, have to be torqued to three newton meters or 26 and a half 27 inch pounds you use loctite as well uh, because the torque settings are not too much and uh, yeah just use loctite okay so let me get that done okay so next get your triumph badge for the right hand side of the bike these are held together with two small screws three mm screws uh, use loctite again and the torque settings for the for these are uh, two newton meters or se about 17.7 uh, 18 inch pounds so about 18 inch pounds uh, 3 mm screws so let me get the tank badge fitted okay side fairing fully fixed now it's time to put the fuel tank infill panels which is right the one that goes inside here you see this part is exposed so uh, there are two one for the right one for the left so make sure you get the right one and I'll just show you it kind of kind of slides in here and uh, it fits underneath this side fairing and also on un also underneath this uh, top fuel tank panel right so let me just it'll kind of sit like this kind of sit like this and remember there were three screws that we removed three five mm screws and you needed an allen key to remove them because uh, you can't get a torque uh, you can't get a ratchet in there um, and uh, yeah, the, the top panel will sit like this and the top panel is still like this and the, the, there's another 5 mm bolt so we'll screw all this later but let me uh, get these 3 mm screws also in order for this to be bolted to the side fairing let me remove this so you see there's a hole here right that needs to be bolted to the side fairing and that's the hole right there for that you're gonna need we removed this earlier you're gonna need this little plastic i think with a 5 mm bolt again so that this this part this part with the screw screws into screws into that hole again torque torque setting of uh three newton meters use a uh, use loctite and use a torque wrench and then that infill panel that plastic panel uh, the top, the top hole, the top, uh, use another 5mm uh, bolt or screw uh, and that, that will go in through the other side and that will hold the infill panel to the side fairing. Okay, so let me first screw this little plastic bracket in and then put the infill panel and use an allen key uh, to put those three 5mm bolts. Okay, let me get that done okay so all done as you as you can see i've fixed uh the infill panel to the side fairing those three screws let me get to the front of the bike and i'll show you front of the bike from underneath right there so the two bottom five mm screws and then the, the one at the top the top one is the one that attaches to that little plastic uh uh plastic bracket right 
that attaches the side fairing. So that's done. And, and do the exact same thing on the left hand side of the bike. Last thing left to do is just screw in this uh, fuel tank panel. And there are only two bolts, one, two, five mm screws. Again, torque setting is three Newton meters and just torque that and then you're done. Okay, so fixed the fuel tank top panel, uh, all done. And actually now you're done with the servicing. You can put your seat back, a seat, uh, seat back on the bike and you're done. I'm not done because I need to fix the high level mud guard, the beak back to the bike. Remember I removed it because I wanted to, I couldn't take out the side fairings without taking out the crash bars and the only way I could figure out how to do that was to take out the beak and then pull the side panel up. So I'm going to fix the beak back, it should be easy. Uh, there are six screws in total, so there's four at the bottom. There were four metal washers, so make sure you have those. And this, those screws, will you have to screw it from the underneath the bike, underneath the beak. And then there are two screws uh, on the one on the left and one on the right so they screw into that hole right here and then the same thing on the other side um, so these these are the these are the two screws that go on the on the side 5 mm torque it to three newton meters the ones at the, the four screws at the bottom which also by the way hold my fog light brackets if you don't have fog lights it doesn't matter but uh, you still need these four screws. Uh, they get torqued to uh, five newton meters, which is 44 and a bit inch pounds or 45 inch pounds. Uh, these ones that go through the metal washers. One more thing, as you can see, there's a little port here. That's for the connector there. That's for the ambient air temperature sensor which we disconnected earlier so when you put the beak make sure to connect that up as well okay use Loctite okay let me get that done okay so I've installed the high level mud guard the beak two screws and then the four 8 mm sockets at the bottom which also hook up the fog light brackets if you don't have fog lights you still need those four 8 mm sockets one two and two at the back. Also, don't forget to hook up the ambient air temperature sensor, which I did. I showed it to you earlier. And that's it, you're done. Your 16K servicing is done. I'll show you now how to reset your error codes because when you did throttle body balancing, you would have thrown error codes because the sensors were disconnected. So start the bike. And then uh, I'll put links in the description, but you can use this software called tiger tool it's free it's uh, uh i'll put links where you can download it or you can use another software called tune ecu that you're going to pay for so launch this application and then hit select port i'll show you i'll give you links how to install it as well as um uh as well as how to install drivers okay oh yeah you need a windows laptop connected to this uh, obd2 connector I'll put links uh, in the description of where I bought this from. I think it's $20, $30 or something like that. There are many brands available, but this one I can put the exact, you can buy the exact one and I can put uh, links to description how to install drivers for this. And then this you hook up to your bike, the bike cable right here. Once that's done with your battery, with your, um, uh, with your bike started, okay, and then hit start the connect connected to ECU okay so it shows me my ECU data my bin number and stuff you can go to DTC which is your error codes check so it's reading it so you can see there are three error codes uh, intake air temperature sensor, secondary air injection system, and as well as fuel level center. So remember, those are the three sensors that we disconnected when doing lower body balancing. So I can just go ahead and erase those because I know I've connected them again. Complete. Just make sure to check ABS error codes as well. There should not be any. 
Oh, there is one. So erase. Complete. Okay. And then I, I didn't show it to you earlier, but you, this is where you do throttle body balancing. So you can see cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three. For this, you need to start your bike, start the engine, sorry. Once with the uh, uh, engine running, then you click start and it'll show you the pressures for all three cylinders. Uh, and then, as, as I mentioned in my video earlier, you just play with the adjuster screws until all three pressure readings are equal. Uh, you, the two will remain constant, you gotta play it with cylinder one and two. And then you hit stop, and then your throttle body's balanced. And that's it, I, yeah, that's it. Okay guys, hopefully, Hopefully this video was useful to you. I'll put uh, links to all the parts and all the tools that I uh, needed to complete this job and as well as the software and then the OBD2, OBD2 connector. And so give it a try and uh, just leave comments if you have any questions and uh, please like and subscribe to my uh, channel. I'll be posting more videos in the future. This is my Triumph Tiger. I also have an Indian Springfield. Uh, I do servicing on all my on both bikes, but yeah, the next video is going to be a tire change. I'm going to attempt it myself, my first ever tire change. So uh, hit like and subscribe, and um, uh, see you in the next video. Bye, guys.